Hello! Uh, I'm Holly and this is my first YouTube video. I'm very excited, as you can tell. Um, I basically, the first thing I'm going to say is I'm really sorry for how crazy this top is. You're just going to have to deal with it. Um, but it just... It's a great top. Um, first thing is I want to base this channel on um, how to be a cheap student vegan in the UK because it's quite hard to find that, I think. Um, on YouTube so I'm gonna try and help you guys as much as possible um, and then also I'm going to talk about uh, how to find makeup that is cruelty free in the UK um, so where you can find it what brands that aren't vegan what brands that are etc etc so yeah um, so the second thing I'm going to talk about is why I'm vegan so prepare yourself because I'm probably gonna give you a really graphic image in your head that you probably weren't looking for. I am vegan obviously because I don't want to contribute to animal cruelty. Um, a lot of vegans can be vegan for health reasons, you know, etc etc, but that's the reason why I'm vegan. Um, I was vegetarian before, I thought I was doing the best that I could for animals, didn't think that, you know, vegan was necessary, I thought it was extreme. Um, you know, all the stuff you hear about vegans and everything, I was exactly the same, thought, you know, the stereotypes of vegans were true. Um, you come to realise that being vegan really is the most and best you can do for the environment, your health, um, the animals obviously. I have come to realise that a cow will not explode if you don't milk it. Um, a cow actually needs to be forcefully impregnated or obviously have sex with a cow to then get pregnant to then produce milk because that's the only way that they can produce milk. Um, so the cow will then obviously have its baby, um, the baby is basically taken away from it instantly um, because the milk is actually for the baby cow, not for us, because it has hormones in it that help the baby grow. Um, it also has pus and blood in it um, because throughout the cow's life the udders and stuff will get, you know, blisters and it will get all sorts in there so it will then start producing pus and everything and it, you know, pretty gross anyway the fact that how much hormones it has in it um, it can only be filtered so much um, but it will still have all of that crap in it because it's not for us so yeah um, and if the baby cow is a male it will grow up to then be meat essentially um, and if it's a female it will go through the same life that its mum has and basically eggs it's an unfertilised egg like it was meant to be a chick let's just get that in our heads and it's also a chicken period which is really gross <laughs> so yeah I mean each to their own if people think that that sounds yummy then great but to me personally it's a big no yeah so the other reason why people turn vegan is obviously you know environmental reasons health reasons but um, environmental reasons is obviously a big one um, I already know that I'm helping the environment, so I don't really research into it as much. I've watched Caspiracy, but you know, I don't really do much further research. But I am obviously, you know, happy the fact that I'm helping the environment. So I've got some facts here to tell you guys. Um, obviously animal agriculture um, contributes towards global warming, um, as livestock ag agriculture has recently been recognised as contributing 18% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. And that was stated by Food and Agriculture Organisation of the United States 2006, which was also cited in Cowspiracy. Um, yeah, I recommend you watch Cowspiracy 100%. It's very interesting, even if you don't want to turn vegan, you know, just to see all of the you know, human daily activities that contribute towards uh, the global warming crisis. Uh, that 18% um, is more than the world's planes, cars contribution combined. So, you know, that just shows how bad animal agriculture really is for the environment. The other thing is obviously, I'm going to try and say this word, but I don't know if I'm saying it right. Um, 3.5 billion hectares hectares of earth surface is used to produce livestock in comparison to 1.2 to 1.5 billion used to grow crops so that's you know there's your facts there just kind of make your mind up from that 
Um, so obviously a vegan diet is very um, beneficial towards the environment. So the third thing I'm going to talk about is what vegans can't eat because people get confused with, you know, vegetarian, vegan, pescatarian. So I'm just going to make it all clear. Um, vegans obviously can't have anything that's from an animal. So no milk. So if there's anything with milk in it, obviously we can't have that. Um, so it's just the case of looking on the back of a packet and seeing if it's got milk in it or not. A lot of things will say may contain milk, but you know, like literally most things say that. It's just in case if they, you know, somebody is lactose intolerant and they have it and, you know, they get really poorly, they can't get sued because it says it may contain it. But yeah, no eggs, no meat, no fish, no seafood, so like no flesh of an animal basically. No gelatin, it's basically in sweets. Um, it's just a bone of an animal, essentially. It's pretty gross no honey personally i wouldn't have honey because it's mass produced it was a natural you know thing for bees to do but because of the mass production it's not anymore and bees are a very important part of the planet and environment because if bees go extinct then we go extinct simple as that the e numbers there's a lot of e numbers that actually contain animal products so there's e120 uh, which is carmine which is red colouring from crushed insects. Pretty gross. Um, I'll just read some out and then I'll put the rest in the description. I'll put the, like, the link in. Um, there's E542, which is edible bone from an animal. Um, there's E901, which is beeswax. Mass production again. Um, there's E904, which is shellac which is from beetles. Um, there's E1105, which is, I don't know how to say this word, I'm gonna try my hardest. Lice, lice, so, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and say that word. Um, which is from chicken eggs. Most of these things aren't in obviously natural things, so vegetables and stuff, you'll obviously never find this in. It's mainly just, um, you know, produce things, so like maybe sweets and stuff like that. So things that are obviously made in factories. And the fourth thing I'm going to talk about is where to shop um, as a vegan. Student, cheap, in the UK. Yeah, that was the weirdest way of saying it ever. Um, I would suggest Audi, if you have an Audi around you. Um, it's great for vegetables, um, you know, your fruit. Your basics like your beans, um, chopped tomatoes, passata, it's basically got everything there. It's even got frozen fruit which is pretty cheap there because it's quite expensive in other shops like Morrison's and Tesco I find. And I would also suggest obviously Lidl, basically Aldi, but I would say that Lidl is better for nuts, seeds, grains such as quinoa etc. Um, obviously there's your other supermarkets like Tesco, Morrison's, Asda, Sainsbury's, I would suggest Sainsbury's out of the rest of them because um, that's got quite a lot of vegan options in it but if you're ever wanting you know tofu and stuff like that you obviously can't find that in Audi or Lidl well not personally in my one anyway I've never been to an Audi that's got had tofu in it but I've actually heard that there has been some with tofu in there so yeah I would suggest uh, Sainsbury's, Tesco they're the places that I would go to for um, my bits and bobs I can't get from Audi so basically if I do a shop I'll go to Audi or Lidl first and then I'll go to Tesco and Sainsbury's afterwards um, to get the rest of my pieces so like you know tofu, soya milk, actually I say soya milk but soya milk is actually an Audi for 59p so it's a good option. If you want your more luxury based items so like um, nutritional yeast um, stuff like that then I would suggest obviously going to Holland and Barrett or there's obviously, you know, like health stores and stuff, which most of the time do have vegan options. Uh, the fifth thing I'm going to talk about is how important it is to do meal prep and meal plans. There's a lot of videos on YouTube um, on how to do a vegan um, meal prep for the week. Uh, one that I recently have watched was from uh, someone that I'll recommend in the uh, last part of the video. Um, Avant Garde Vegan, he did a really, really, really good 
video that cost him £15, I think he said, um, to get all of the ingredients, except from the only thing that he already had was agave nectar, but I would necessarily say that you need it. I would say that, you know, you can have alternative sweetness and stuff. Because a lot of the recipes you find on YouTube and stuff, you don't actually need most of the things. You can kind of make it cheaper for, to things that you have at home and stuff. But the thing that I always do is meal plan. So if I need to go shopping um, and I've run out of food, I will write down um, the things, like the meals I want in the week. Um, I'll write a list of the vegetables and, you know, bits and bobs I will need for those meals that I don't obviously have. Um, and then obviously I'll go and like buy them and stuff. So then all the things that you've brought are necessary because you'll need those for the meals that you've um, planned to have. So then once you've run out of all the meals that you've had, then you'll obviously run out of all the vegetables and stuff. And most of the time, because um, as a student, um, I will make a meal and I'll usually have like another half of it left over so then I'll keep it and save it for the next day or you know freeze it or whatever if it's freezeable of course that's a really important thing to do if you're if you're wanting to do it cheap you know and you think that being vegan is really expensive and stuff it's loads better to just plan your meals beforehand it's the same for every sort of diet to be fair it's just loads cheaper um the last thing I'm going to talk about finally <laughs> youtubers so basically i would recommend following youtubers for recipes for inspiration just to you know keep you on the track most of them are american but that's just what i've found i'm probably missing loads i don't know <laughs> but yeah the first um ones are british so it will be easier to you for you to find like the things that they buy and stuff um avant-garde vegan I mentioned him in uh, the meal prep um really helpful ideas so obviously he does he's done two videos of meal prep um ideas now i think um but he also does experimental vegan meals so like tofu fish and chips i've tried the recipe for that it was quite easy um he sometimes uses luxury based items so he'll use like healthier stuff so buckwheat flour and stuff if you follow the recipes and stuff they're usually not that expensive that's um all the british ones i could find um I will link some more in the description probably that I recommend but the American ones there's Liv's Healthy Life so Liv's Healthy Life is um, she, she does cheap easy um, vegan meals and it's almost like comfort food but then there's also healthy alternatives as well so she'll do things like nachos um, vegan style uh, like tacos and stuff like that she'll do all the sort of things that you know you crave as a vegan um and she'll also do videos like meal prep as well so she'll also do videos like um lunch ideas which i find really helpful because as a vegan i think it's quite hard to think of lunches and breakfasts caitlin shoemaker she doesn't make shoes unfortunately <laughs> um but she is amazing for students like she does a video she did a video that um included just a microwave on how to cook the meal um and I think she did like three different meal ideas but just using the microwave and it was just phenomenal. It was a great idea. Um, and she just does really cheap meals as well so I 100% recommend her. If you're going to watch anyone I would recommend her the most. Cheap Lazy Vegan. Um, she does obviously cheap Lazy Vegan food. Um, pretty self-explanatory. But it's a lot of, she does a lot of um, dinner ideas, lunch ideas, breakfast, you name it, she does all of it. I will link most of them in the description box so you can all have a look, have a wonder. And that will be it for my video. So I'm very sorry for overwhelming you if I have done, <laughs> but uh, this is probably going to be a really long video so I apologise about that. So yeah, I will leave that there and thank you so, so much for watching, honestly I really appreciate it. Um, I've been wanting to make a YouTube video for ages and I've just been really scared, you know, for the hate and everything like that, but I'm just going to do what I want and try and do it well. <laughs> and I hope that I have changed people's opinions on vegans, because there's a lot of stereotypes, but we're not all the same. Some people are, some people aren't. But thank you so much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>